Good, good evening from Melbourne or Nam in Australia. I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung country, and I acknowledge that these lands were never ceded and pay my respects to their elders and ancestors. And of course, to all Indigenous and First Nations people joining the webinar. Uh, as you can see on the slide, I'm one of seven um, authors of this presentation, but for uh, to be efficient with time, I'll, I'll just present on my own. And here we are. Are the other members of the Nora Mitchell, Maya Ishizawa, Jessica Brown, Nicole Fragistini, and Steve Brown, many of whom are online tonight. So good evening to all of you too. We are from Portugal, the USA, Peru, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, and Australia. But you can also see here our working methods on the slide, a long and continuing series of meetings over Zoom sometimes at very early or late times for some of us, not always looking our best. We were physically separated by the global pandemic and initially started to get together to bridge the distance. We decided to step briefly away from our organizational and institutional affiliations to connect with each other, reflect on our experiences and offer guidance to others on implementing nature cultures. This presentation will be our first opportunity to communicate to anyone what we've been up to and to share some thoughts that our journey together has afforded. A great deal has been done in global programs to bridge the divide between ideas of culture and nature in heritage practice, including, of course, the nature cultures dialogues and continuing engagement within the ISCCL, the ECOMOS Connecting Practice Program. We have had the benefits of being involved in these programs and the community of practice has grown very quickly. Along the way, we have experienced many moments where enriched by cultural knowledge from many places, colleagues, site managers and communities asked, how can I start to implement these ideas and reflections in my own practices? How can I make a start? There is a desire for guidance. And yet we wanted to resist the kind of broad codification that often misses important nuances while we're still exploring the ideas. The emergence of cultural landscapes concepts heralded important mindset shifts in heritage practices. And much of this work has been led here over the past 50 years in this committee. However, an important and enduring nature culture binary in heritage practices is still evident, even in cultural contexts that do not make a separation. So we decided to try to capture some of what we've learned so far and to produce a practice note. We focus on the possibilities offered by nature cultures to achieve conservation outcomes that are effective and inclusive. Nature cultures was a term coined by Donna Haraway in 2003 to recognize that natural and human environments, including non-human and more than human beings are intimately bound or entangled within different places. In the rest of the time I have, I will give you a brief preview of the work. There are obvious limitations in what we've done. Most obviously we have worked only in English. We also have not yet created a very radical manifesto that would match the adventurous definition of nature cultures offered by Donna Haraway. To be helpful in the short term, the practice note works within existing conservation frameworks but aims for creativity. Here are some objectives. We wanted to provide practical advice and to encourage further dialogue and learning by doing, rather than pretending that there are perfect recipes that will work everywhere. While we get lost sometimes and, and have done so more than once, we wanted to focus on the interface between natural and cultural heritage practices rather than on heritage practices in general. A practice note, not a book or a manual. 
with octopus to remind us to remember that uh, site managers, heritage practitioners, and communities have a lot to do with many responsibilities and pressures. The points on this page indicate some strong themes that underpin everything in the practice note. The importance of community empowerment, rights-based approaches, and transdisciplinarity. Putting these things up front allowed us to avoid repetition in the rest of the practice note. Here is our current roadmap of the practice note. You won't be able to read all the print and it is still being revised, but you can see that there are three major sections, each with three key steps. You can see here on the right, one of several drawings, this one by Steve Brown, to emphasize that the practice note is not intending to be too codified or linear. Users should be able to dive in wherever they wish, according to their needs. In you real life- two, You have two minutes, Krista, excuse me. Yes, okay, thank you. In real life, there won't be a beginning or an end, but different needs or priorities that emerge and mutate. On the left of this slide, you can see steps one through three within the part that we call getting started. The next three steps are grouped together as digging deeper and build on the foundations that were established in the first, in the first group. And finally, steps seven through nine go into system level issues such as the management structures and processes and governance. In the end, we encourage advocacy, be a champion for nature cultures. We argue that applying nature cultures in our practices is beneficial for people and places and can support more effective conservation outcomes. We are still working through the text, but we hope to finish it soon. When it is finished, we will circulate it, hoping that it will be applied and improved growing beyond the efforts of the seven people who started it off. Please join us to think further about these ideas. And thank you very much for the opportunity to show you this work. Thank you.